Today we're going to take a look at the new world's fastest consumer SSD and it looks like this. Hey everybody, welcome to PC Perspective. I'm Ryan Shrout. He's Alan Malventano. We're here to talk about SSDs again today. Yeah. This, one's a, this is not your normal SSD release, though. It is not. This is a little bit more important, a little bit more interesting. Right? Anytime Samsung releases a new consumer product, that's a big deal. Mm -hmm. They're by far the biggest player in the SSD market still. Yep. Uh, they're 840s, they're 850s, very popular products. This is the 950. Uh, you already wrote a story kind of announcing it. They talked about it. Uh, yep, last at, month. Uh, yeah, at an event over in, in Korea. This is their first M.2 PCI product that's retail. PCIe. Yeah, not PCI. Uh, so, so yeah, I mean, the, here's what's interesting, right? So these are, we're looking at M.2 drives only, right? These are not available in, in two and a half inch form factors. Right. So, and they're, um, they're M.2 PCIe, not M.2 SATA. Right, which is important. Yes. Uh, and they also support NVMe. Yes. The non-volatile memory extension. Extensions or Express. Express, one of those. Um, and so, it's, it's the 950, so it, it sounds like it should be the successor to the 850. Mm -hmm. But we only know of those drives in 2.5-inch form factors. There's a whole lot of people out there that are going to be very confused about how they utilize <laughs> one of these uh, in their drives, uh, or in their systems, rather. Um, so they're M.2, uh -huh. meaning you have to have, you yeah. either have to have a motherboard that has an M.2 slot on it. Right. You have to have a riser card that goes from a typical PCI Express slot to an M.2 slot, yep. or you have to be installing it like a notebook or something like that. That's true, right? but you have to be careful because for the, the laptops, notebooks, or desktops even, you have to make sure that you, if you want to boot from that, mm -hmm. that they can boot from NVMe specifically. Right. right. Because there is M.2 PCI Express that also followed the AHCI protocol, that's the older ones. Which is like the SATA style protocol, uh, kind of, which yeah. basically makes it more compatible across Right, wider that, range that, of, uh, that's systems. that's the protocol that things like RAID cards use, and basically anything that's like a PCI storage device okay. used. Right, NVMe is newer. You just have to be, be careful, make sure that the system supports that because the BIOS has to understand what that type of device is for it to be able to boot from it. So let's talk about some of the positives, some of the new stuff about this before we dive into maybe some of the complications with that. Right, so this is a new controller from Samsung. Yes. What what anything change in it or? <laughs> well, it's it's new in that. Um, it has a new set of letters. It's UBX as opposed to like MEX or MGX or any okay. other ones from the from the 850 series and right. stuff like that. Um, but in reality, it seems to be the same, almost identical controller to what was in the 951 NVMe version, which we tested a couple months back. Mm -hmm. um, but that was just an OEM only part. It wasn't retail, right. and that part did not have 3D VNAND. Uh, okay. 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 So this one has, and, and this is. Ironically, the exact kind of product that I, I was kind of begging Samsung to re, to release, mm -hmm. like, I'm sure they were already thinking about it, but when we looked at the NVMe SM951, oh, sure. we were like, wow, this is amazing. It does, you know, like, uh, all, all this, you know, almost better performance than the huge Intel SSD 750 series, right. and it's only an M.2 form factor, and it draws half the power, right. and like, this is, this is great, right? Um, all the same stuff applies here. It's actually even a little bit less power. So it's like seven watts for the half a terabyte model, sure. power draw, and that's like worst case. That's basically you're writing to it at over a gig per second, then it draws seven watts. Okay. Uh, so you, where are you gonna get stuff at, at that speed, first of all, to fill this thing right. for any length of time, right? right? Um, so it's, uh, you know, impressive specs. Read speed on that, if you're holding the 512, is uh, two and a half gig per second. Two and a half gigabytes per second read speed uh -huh. on the 512. One, one and a half gig per second. Okay. On on the uh, quarter of a terabyte model, and then you've got um, what have you got for writes? 1.5 and 900 meg per second. Okay, so they're they're very fast drives. Yeah. Right. Clearly faster than uh, SATA. Faster than other PCIe drives we have seen, thanks to the NVMe implementation. Also worth noting is that these drives only have. ICs on one side of them. Yeah, yeah, they've managed to make them only single-sided. Do you think they, did they have to do that for spacing reasons, or did they want to do that 
to make it an impressive technology. I don't know of any M.2 slots that have interference on one side of the board like that, where you couldn't have just, I mean, because the components are only at a couple of millimeters right. to the thickness anyway. Right. I think Samsung, uh, they're able to stack their VNAND high enough to only fit it into two packages to give you a half a terabyte worth as it is. So probably just made the design decision, like we don't need to, like why would you only put a couple, like one flash chip on the backside when you could just design it with like nothing. It just right? kind of unifies your PCB design and that type of thing. Yeah. Perhaps. Okay. Yeah. And they plan on uh, launching a one terabyte model next year, early next year. Okay. Uh, they're waiting on their 48 layer VNAND. Same length, M.2 card and it'll everything? It'll be the same length, and I think it'll even still be single-sided. Okay. Yep. That's impressive. Um, so, performance is, is awesome. Yeah, performance right? is great. Right? I mean, like, read speeds, write speeds, random speeds. Uh, uh, yeah, basically, uh, the the half a terabyte model pretty much just cleaned house. Oh, really? On, all, on pr almost every benchmark. Um, and then the uh, 512 gig model... Um, was neck and neck with a with a 1.2 terabyte 750 series SSD really? from Intel. Okay. Uh, on a lot of the tests, it was basically like right on par with that model. Hmm. Um, but again, realize the half terabyte model that means it was beating the both Intel SSD the smaller model and yeah. the Intel SSD 750, right? And this again consumes half the power, and it's tiny compared to. You right. Know, a rather large Intel so, you know, SSD. So let's let's talk about. Uh, that aspect of it, right? So the compatibility of NVMe is still a concern. Yes. There's still uh, operating systems that can't do it. Like mm. if you have Windows 7, you can't boot off the, NVMe still, there's right? There's a hotfix. There is? Okay. Yeah. Um, Windows 10 will support it, but it really comes down to your platform, mm -hmm. right? So Z170, like if you have a Skylake platform that has yep. an M.2, that'll support it. Uh, X99. Z90, X99, X99 did add support for it. Yep. Um, but I don't know if a lot of those have M.2 slots integrated. You'll probably have to use one of the riser cards. Either that or you just have it. to have one of those systems like uh, we have... Um what was it, the Sabertooth X99 mm -hmm. that has an M.2 slot. Right, yeah, yeah. Um, some of them do, but not as many do as the Z170s. Right. But, I mean, what if you have a Z97 board or even a Z87 board? It, I've, I've seen some stuff floating around where it, it's just, it's kind of here and there, but some motherboard manufacturers seem to be going a little bit further back now yeah. and releasing BIOS updates for those, like, I guess probably, you know, responding to consumer pressure, I would imagine, because everybody's... Well, know. I mean, now you've actually, you're going to have a retail available product that somebody buys, puts in their, you know, Asus MSI Gigabyte motherboard. If it doesn't, they can't boot off of it. They're going to, the first thing they're going to do is, is go to motherboard support, probably, yeah. Yeah. would be my guess. So, I mean, I, I just wanted to bring that up. I mean, we actually posted a, a story that looked at NVMe compatibility kind of in line with the Intel SSD 750 series release. Yep. Um, and it was maybe a little bit better than I expected, but still not great. So it's something to be aware of, right? I expect that there will be lots of questions in our comments and in the forums about, hey, I have this platform, will it work with the We've already gotten will, those questions. Okay, yeah. yeah. And, and so I, I expect that to absolutely be the case for the foreseeable future going forward. Yeah, best um, we can say is just, you know, buyer beware, but it's not the fault of this. It's just the, the fault of, like, NVMe it, not it being... It is the industry needing to adopt NVMe support kind of across the board for booting and, and compatibility reasons. Yep. Um, you also introduced a, a new uh, kind of benchmarking style or configuration here. Just in a real quick way, yeah. you have a whole page in the review dedicated to uh, latency, mm -hmm. right? So what does that mean, and, and what, is the, what does some of the information tell us? So, so in the past, we've had iometer results, the very last four charts of the, usually the last four charts that show up in a review. Mm -hmm. uh, but for iometer, it showed average latency. So the same workloads we were applying that usually give you your nice little ramp up, I, you know, IOs, Go up, IOs yeah. per second chart. Yeah. The other one is a, like an exponential rise, and mm -hmm. it's the latency. It's what the latency of the SSD does. Gotcha. But those points are only just the average. And the for average, the entire test run. For, for, for whatever that particular, you know, Q depth, Q -depth this, is. It, you know, it's just one point, and it's just the average. Right. And that totally does not tell you the whole story. Um, because when you actually look at the distribution of the latency, you can have an SSD... One SSD might have like all of its IOs in a very nice tight group, mm -hmm. and that's good. You want everything to be like if it's fast, you want everything to be fast. Well, another one might be even maybe most of the IOs are faster, but if it has some that are way out and take Slow. and take longer time, yeah, that's significant, and that will actually result in your system running much slower in the end because like you might have 
you know, you're waiting on you're waiting that on other one stuff IO to come before back. you can before you can get to the vast stuff again. Right? I, I think for people that are familiar with us and PC perspective, an analogy, a kind of approximate analogy, is something to what we do with the frame pacing or the frame rating style stuff. It's very close, right? So. You're, you're looking for, you want the frame rates to be consistent, mm -hmm. and anytime there's an outlier, there's instances where there's a group of frames that take longer than you would expect to render, mm -hmm. that drastically affects your performance, but it gets washed away if you just look at average. Right. Right. And so the same idea is kind of what you're applying here. It is. Right. Um, it's, now, a, it's, it's applied a little differently as far as the math goes, yeah. but it's on principle, it's the same thing. Okay. Right. Um, so what we have is a couple of different style charts in there one of them just shows like the kind of bell curve of these are where all the ios fall mm -hmm. right um the more interesting one and the easier to read one <laughs> is what i call latency percentile which is just from zero up to 100 where do where does the drive sweep through all of that percentile worth of ios right so you're basically organizing it into numerical order and then where does that fall yeah and basically just see nice smooth curves from zero to 100% mm -hmm. for any given SSD. And basically the further to the left you are, the faster it is. Right. And what's even handier is I can actually put hard drives on the same chart. Right, because it doesn't get blown out of the it, scale. It, yeah, the yeah. scale is logarithmic. So we can <laughs> realistically have hard drives even though they're thousands of times slower. Right. Um, but you know, we have them on the same chart and you yeah. can actually look and My see. My favorite one is you have an SSD, like the very, like one of the world's first SSDs and it's a vertical line because there's no change in performance. It, it doesn't ramp up at all. It, it's just, it, this it is the speed I go, man. Yeah. And that's the speed I'm like, going to go I'm at. only going to go this fast. And so it's, it, it, what's funny is it's actually super consistent. That actually looks great. Yeah. If it wasn't for the fact that that line was so far to the right. Compared to the other SSDs. Compared to the other SSDs. It's still faster than hard drives. Oh yeah. But in there. So I, I know this is something we're going to spend more time on in the future, this kind of latency distribution yep. um, a methodology of testing. We have different workloads for enterprise uh, use cases and mm -hmm. consumer use cases that we're going to dive into. Um, but we just want to give people a little bit of a heads up of what that page is in the review. And you should obviously go to pcpro.com and read the article so you can see those graphs. Yep. Um, and make sure you know you can click on them and get to get a slightly larger version so you can kind of zoom in and, yeah. and read There's what you need to There's a lot of information in there. There's a lot of data in there. Uh, visualized in a, in a fairly interesting way. So let's let's finish up here and talk about price. Uh, these are shipping on October 29th, according to Amazon. Yes. Right. So just a week from today, uh, it's only available in 256 and 512. Mm -hmm. uh, one terabyte's coming. One terabyte coming in 2016. They mm -hmm. say it is 199 for the 256 gig. Right. And 349 for the 512 gig, yep. which equates to so cool, around uh, 78 cents for the lower end one and 68 cents per gig for the higher end model, mm -hmm. or the higher capacity model. And this is the fastest SSD you can buy. Now, if you compare that to Intel 750 series SSD, uh -huh. these, these are still less cost per gig. They're still cheaper. Yeah. So, I mean, that's that's impressive stuff, right? Like, yep. not only are they still cheaper, but you might, now granted these don't come with an adapter board if you don't have M.2 on the system you have, that's they're like ten bucks or something. Yeah, on Amazon some, or like some some other boards actually ship with that. I know uh, one of the ASUS boards we got in recently shipped with a PCI Express mm -hmm. to M.2 PCI Express. I actually adapter. I actually used it to test one of these. The yeah. other one the other one I had right in the M.2 slot. And then, right. Yeah. So I mean, it, so you might have an extra little bit of upfront cost if that kind of adapter yeah. didn't come with your system. Right. But think about it. Like, I mean, they're rated for a very large amount. Like it's, um, what is it, 400 terabytes written total for the half a terabyte model. Hmm. Like you'd have to. That's a lot. That's a lot. You, yeah, bit. you'd have to write the drive 800 times <laughs> to, to, you know, to basically. Yeah, to, sure. To, and that's only to hit Samsung's rating. It's almost right. just as impressive. Like we talked about the technology, we talked about the pricing, we talked about all the uh, performance results. But it's like it's all exists in this little thing, this thing that looks like a piece of gum. Yeah. Right. Like they could sell them in those types of packages. These boxes way overkill. <laughs> That's true. For it what could they be are, in a little right? gum package. Right. You know, just <laughs> undo the foil wrapper, stick it in <laughs> your motherboard, in your and you system. go. Um, but this is this is pretty impressive stuff, and it's just it's just you know five year warranty. And Samsung has not extended this to 10 like they did with the yeah. with the 850 Pros. Um, but like, this is the kind of a thing that you'll buy it, you'll put it in your system, and it'll, you'll just keep moving it from like, you know, I mean, it has as fast as it is for performance. Yeah. And as long as it should be able to last. This this right? this this appeals to me as like we've been building a lot of like really ultra small mini ITX cases. Right. And some of those mini ITX boards have 
M.2 slots, but they don't necessarily support the size. Yeah, yeah. This right? is this is twenty two eighty, which is the stand kind of the standard length for yeah. for these. And there's a lot of those smaller form factor systems for some reason won't go the extra like twenty two millimeters or twenty mm. millimeters worth of length. Mm. Just you know, they got other stuff they want to put on that PCB. Yeah. I, I see where they're coming from, but. I think they will start changing their tune. They're going to have these to. Drives are out there. You, you just not only yeah. that, but you really don't see the smaller lengths I, anywhere. This is pretty much all I've ever seen in terms of AHCI or PCIe based right. M.2 drives. So go to PCPro.com, guys. We have the full review. Alan has all of his benchmarks there. You can see some more. There's not a whole lot to take pictures of. <laughs> it's just it's already but, open. It's, there's but, nothing. To well, take I mean, apart. like. You know, there's just not a lot to see there. Yeah. Uh, but it's very cool. It's like benchmarks, pictures, uh, details on that latency evaluation methodology that he was using, uh, and then some some pricing information as well. Make sure you go to PCPro.com, check that out. Uh, we will be back relatively soon with more storage and other videos at PC Perspective. Thanks, guys. Thanks.